Welcome to the Rewrite Your Story with Tasha Joe podcast, where we fearlessly dive into the vast realm of thoughts, ideas, and conversations that know no bounds. Buckle up and prepare for a wild ride as we venture into uncharted territories and explore the unexplored. On this journey, we leave no stone unturned and no topic untouched. From the profound to the absurd, from the mundane to the extraordinary, we delve into the depths of human curiosity and embrace the sheer unpredictability of life. This is the podcast where anything and everything takes center stage. Each episode is a thrilling adventure into the unknown as we bring you fascinating discussions, captivating stories, and mind-bending perspectives. As we embark on a quest for knowledge, enlightenment, and endless entertainment. Expect the unexpected, for here there are no boundaries and no limitations. Open your mind, expand your horizons, and get ready to be captivated by the infinite possibilities that await. So whether you're a seeker of knowledge, a lover of stories, or simply someone who craves the thrill of the unknown, this podcast is tailor-made just for you. Tune in, fasten your seatbelt, and prepare for a roller coaster ride through the vast expanse of human curiosity. Get ready to be amazed, enlightened, and entertained because on this podcast, there's only one rule. There are no rules. Hello, beautiful friends. Welcome back. On today's episode, we have guest speaker Derek Gazowski. Oh, you got it right. Gazowski. That's awesome. And today's topic is controversial diet and kratom. I think those are two things we should. So you say talk. kratom. I call it kratom. We're talking about the same thing, right? I say kratom, tomato. To, okay, yeah, we're okay, definitely just, talking about the same thing. Okay. So we'll go ahead and let you uh, start us off. Okay, cool. Hi, Tosh. Thank you for Hello. having me on. Thank just you for being here. <laughs> so today, something that has really been a very passionate subject that I've been following and really take very deeply to heart is diet. I think as I've been going through the sobriety journey, as we've been exploring with Kava Kava, as we've been looking at natural alternatives to medication. By the way, I'm actually down to one medication now from Good 14. for you. 10 from years 14? ago. From 14? 14 different wow. like, prescriptions. I was a walking pharmacy. And it's Dr. Amy. I partnered with her. And shout out to Dr. Amy. I'll be seeing her on Wednesday. But I partner with her because she's a total badass. Can I say badass? Yeah, absolutely. Right, cool. anything. So she's a total badass because she is a medical doctor, MD, but she's also a holistic doctor. So she has oh, two I love that. medical degrees. And so what's cool about Dr. Amy is she won't pull out her prescription pad unless she knows what you're eating. Mm. Where your exercise is, what your stress mitigation is. How all doctors are. should be. <laughs> yeah, weird, right? So yeah. she she's she won't even take you on as a patient if you're not willing to actually have a partner in health. Isn't awesome. that how isn't that how a doctor's supposed yeah, to be? Yeah, they're supposed to get to the root of the problem. Yeah. And so I found because I'm a type two diabetic, I found that my pain levels were really starting to drop on a daily basis, just being eating more meat or a ketogenic diet. Mm -hmm. I was still eating a lot of vegetables, I was whatever, but I wasn't quite, I think, at my optimum level that I'm feeling right now, but who knows if it's just a honeymoon period or whatever. So anybody that's listening, I'm not telling anybody how to eat. I'm not a doctorologist by any means. I'm just speaking for yeah, what from works, your own experience. from my own experience, yeah. right? And so the ketogenic diet, and I had done Atkins years ago and I felt really good on it. And everybody was always looking at me like, dude, how are you eating all this steak and everything? And you're not you're losing weight. I don't get it. And I think that we have been confused by mainstream media and that doggone food pyramid to confuse us, to state that, you know, make sure you eat all your healthy whole grains and, you know, eat meat at a minimum and eat all these veggies and all this stuff. But healthy whole grains, let's dive into things like oxalates and yeah. lectins and how much we're actually putting into our body. Let's also ask the question, if anything's traded on Wall Street, right, as a commodity or something that somebody's profiting from, like big food, right? Mm -hmm. Then maybe it's not the right thing we should be putting in our bodies. If our bodies are temples. Yeah. And we're talking about how to keep our bodies pure. If we're on a spiritual journey, then our body is a temple and we want it to be as fluid and as wonderfully functioning as possible. It's our right? one vehicle for life. Oh, yeah. get one. Yeah. Right? Like, mm -hmm. I don't care what anybody says. There might be some clones out there or whatever. That's a whole nother rabbit <laughs> hole. But for those of us that don't have billions of dollars and can't afford to clone to walk around and take pieces off of, we probably <laughs> need to take care of the body we have. Right? Yeah. 
So I, I found that the ketogenic diet was really working for me. I'm a carb addict like everybody else. So I was really like eating a ton of carbs. And of course my insulin was out of whack. My sugar wasn't doing well. So again, I had to get put on medications and so I had recently, Dr. Amy had prescribed me Ozempic because I am a type two diabetic and it just never, I never felt good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I lost my appetite. Yeah. Whatever. Everything made me nauseous. I didn't want to go to, I don't even want to talk about like yeah. all the side effects. It just Oh, I've heard broke. it's like the number one diet fad right now that I have several girlfriends that took it and lost a ton of weight, but they were nauseous, tired all the time. And I'm like, ugh. No and as soon as you come off it, guess yeah, what you happens? Gain all the weight back. Yeah. And, it's, and it's that yo dieting. People, yeah. I think it's a temporary. I think thing. people always want to have that magic pill and oh, nobody wants sure. to do the work, yeah. right? Yeah. Like we could look, and, and this is the problem, I think, also with our society is we are comparing ourselves to like social media yep. models and influencers who take a thousand pictures of themselves, right? And then that one perfect after editing yeah. and all that Gosh. airbrush, that's the one that, and then we're comparing ourselves, what we see in the mirror every day to that. Yeah. That's already an unfair comparison. Yeah. And everybody in social media wants to post this perfect life that they're living and how much money they're making and how cool they are. And really when you dive into it, they're not healthy. They're no. not happy. And if you got to put a drug into your system to be healthy, maybe we should be questioning what health is, if that's the case. Because yeah. last time I checked, you should just be healthy. The food that you eat should be healing you. Your body does a pretty good job at it. Medicines are usually like a last ditch effort. And, yeah. and then we'll, if, if, for example, let's talk about the COVID vaccination. Some people were for it. Other people were against it. Everybody has their opinion. I got vaccinated. I was of the mindset because I was already an autoimmune compromise that I probably should put on taking the medication for me. But that, again, is just speaking for me. Mm -hmm. A lot of you, oh, I can't believe you're putting that body, poison in your body, whatever. But then again, that was four years ago. I was not as healthy as I am now. I know it's weird. I'm getting older and getting healthier. Oh, no, that we're reverse aging too, That's for right. sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm ready for it. I'm actually in better shape now than I was 10 years ago. Yeah. I, I feel more physically fit, better cardiovascularly, like my mental cognitivity. Better energy. Way better energy. And when we did our last podcast, I was probably like 14 days sober, right? It was like January. Um, when did we do that one? I think so. Oh gosh, I don't know. I think you were at least a month in, weren't you? Maybe I was a month. I can't remember now. Yeah. But now I'm close to, I'm, I'm pushing 80 days, right? Awesome. Good for you. So like That's getting rid so of that awesome. other poison out of my yeah. system and then getting the sleep. Getting, it's just a combination of everything. But then really diving into diet. What am I eating? And oh, by the way, we're going to talk about Kratom here in a second or Kratom or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> because I think it really coincides if we're going to talk about natural healing. Like I love Kratom. I take it. All the time. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every day, like yeah. three scoops. And yep. it's funny because I work for the place that I work for. So they're really adamant about, oh, all these weird things. But I can't, I, because of Kratom or how do you, what do you call it? I call it Kratom. Yeah. I, I, I guess I should look at, or like on Surrey. How do you pronounce this and see what, just, what do you call it? Siri? Oh, I call it Surrey. Uh, see? <laughs> tomato, <laughs> tomato. <laughs> it's very big. Yeah. So, so anyways, um, Kratom, I, I really, uh, I take three scoops in the morning. I got to have coffee. Look, so I'm not a perfect carnivore right now or a ketovore because I eat the coffee. Yeah. Tell you, look, oh, right. Coffee is my, and then, and you're a former barista, so you mm -hmm. love this. I stumbled upon sugar-free syrups. Oh, yeah. God. That's been, <laughs> that's mm -hmm. been, so like I got three of them now and, and then I mix them and stuff. Like, oh, I have a chocolate macadamia nut salted caramel. I'm like such a prima yeah. donna now with yeah. my coffee, but. Okay. I'm a coffee snob too yeah. when I drink it. <laughs> Sue me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everything else is pretty good and I'm still feeling awesome. My blood sugar has been without any medication. I have been like adamant about stuff. My blood sugar has been within. So what they say for diabetics, your, your blood sugar range could be anywhere from 80 to 120. I even, I, now there's a dawn effect when you wake up where your sugar, in your, excuse me, your glucose in your system Mm -hmm. Every even if you're not diabetic, it knows you're waking up, so it gives you that sugar rush in your system to be ready to take on the day, so yeah. that you're going to be active and doing stuff. So your your sugar will spike. So I get up to about 120 in the morning, but if I went and checked my sugar right now, I'd probably be 90, 100, and perfect. Okay. And I haven't eaten since five o'clock this morning. Yeah. 
And it will be the same. Even if I don't eat for 24 hours, it'll just be the same because of the diet that I'm eating, like I'm fat adapted, which is the thing being metabolic. And you feel great. <laughs> friggin' amazing. Yeah. So ketones, that's the thing about the ketogenic diet. What you're really trying to do is get your liver to start producing ketones. And ketones are your brain's preferred fuel. So you'll notice a lot of people that switch over from a heavy carbohydrate diet to a low carb diet and heavy fat, they'll talk about this brain fog being lifted mm -hmm. and this energy level, like this just limitless energy. And let me tell you, it's a real thing. Yeah. It really is a real thing. And so anybody that, you know, for whatever your religious purposes are, dietary needs, if you choose to be vegan, you can still be ketogenic and vegan or vegetarian. Mm -hmm. You just got to figure out like avocados are great fats, right? Oh, yeah. Coconuts. I eat fat. avocados all the time. Olive oil, <laughs> olive oil, all those fantastic fats. I highly definitely ask anybody to explore that rabbit hole, talk to their doctor, find out if, they, if their practices and everything coincide with their belief systems, and then go from there. Now, another plant, you know, here's where you get to that kratom thing. Mm -hmm. Another plant I'd love to talk about is kratom, because when I was telling you about my 14 medications, pain pills were one of them. I used to take pain pills back in the day, too. I was popping those things every like day. Like GGBs, right? Like, because they just prescribed you, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm here. So yeah. I was on a long-term uh oxycodone which was a time release and i was at 30 milligram throughout the day so i was able to take two of those a day and then i had i was prescribed a, a seven a day of 10 milligram Vicodin. wow so that's, that's a just lot. two medications plus my blood pressure medicine uh, which i needed two of those my metformin which i needed a time release and then the regular metformin so there are seven then i was on a biologic called humira and then I switched over to a biologic called Cushentic. So I was taking that once a month or whenever. Still, that's the last medication that I'm on right now. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how I found out about Kratom is back when I used to take Percocets, I was taking 30 milligram Percocets and I wasn't prescribed them. I was taking them for pleasure. And <laughs> I will be honest, but I knew I needed to get off of it. And a buddy of mine had said, hey, have you heard of Kratom? And so I didn't want to just stop taking them because I'd been taking them all the time. And so then I got into taking Kratom and then, yeah, it's been years since and I have no desire to ever go back. And I watched that documentary. A Leaf of Faith? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Was that how you got found out about it? I found out about it from my buddy, but then I watched it. And I'm somebody who I, even though people recommend things, I like to do my own research. So now mm -hmm. I'm researching, reading about it, watching documentaries, and I've been taking it since and I love it. So shout out to Chris Bell because that documentary changed my life too. Yeah. And it changed, it's like he was actually in the process of filming, filming prescription thugs. Okay. And I've seen that. Oh man. It's, he bashes the farm pharmaceutical Good. Uh, industry because they need an ass kick in everything. Yeah. And so he, because he had a genetic hip problem. And so he talks about like the hip surgery that he had. And then his recovery, and he was like, oh, yeah, you'll be walking within a day. And this is like within the first five minutes. And he's, because he's so loaded up on oxys and Percocets, right? He, like him walking around with help and everything was their version of walking. But in his mind, he's like, I see myself like, you know, in a in the middle of a Rocky montage, you know, and yeah. you're jacked up yeah. and going and whatever, right? And, but the reality was, you know, it, and I don't want to ruin the movie for anybody, but it changed my life. Mm -hmm. And once I watched A Leaf of Faith. Is it still on Netflix? It's been years since I seen I it. I know you can get it. Like a lot of his movies are free on YouTube. Okay. okay. So Prescription Thugs, I just rewatched that the other day. And that's where he did about his thing. And so he basically goes after Big Pharma. And some of the stats that he pulls up are alarming, right? Stat number one represent 5% here in America, We, because I know you have followers everywhere in the world, yeah. right? Five, mm -hmm. Here in the States, we, we represent 5% of the world's population. We consume 75% of the world's prescription drugs, okay? We also represent 25% of the world's incarcerated people, mm. right? And consume over 55% of the world's natural resources. So we are... Can you tell this guy does his research? <laughs> you have a lot of knowledge. I love it. Thank you. So, so basically, we're over medicated. We're under. Oh yeah, we're like number eighty nine in the world for education. That's another big one. Yeah, like, under educated, over medicated, extra incarcerated, like all the aids. Right, we're we're there, and the issue is. We are almost, it's almost whoever the they is, it, it would make sense that the they. Let's talk about outwitting the devil. Going back oh, to yeah. that book, right? Yeah. 
how does he get mankind to drift? Alcohol, drugs, poor nutrition, yep. bad digestion, poor sleep, stress, whatever he could throw at you, whatever the negative spirit is that that is is after you to to stop you from succeeding. Mm-hmm. He's gonna use these tools to get to you. To get you to vibrate lower. Right. Yeah. And so let's just dive back into food for a second. Carbohydrates are what? Sugar. That's sugar in your mm-hmm. system. Okay. We can all agree that sugar is pretty addictive, right? We know it. It's measurable that sugar yeah. is addictive. What's alcohol made out of? Sugar. Yeah. Yeah. So weird. So the most legal yet most addictive, dangerous, and deadly substance is made out of what? Sugar. Sugar, yeah. And then what are they feeding us and telling us to eat? Sugar. So is it weird that we go from a high carbohydrate, high sugar addiction straight into an alcohol addiction and then we can't seem to break either and then we die early of diabetes, Mm -hmm. stroke, heart attacks, all these other things because we manage our stress and everything with what? What does a a grown-up manage their stress with? Shot of vodka at the end of the night, you know what I mean? Or we eat our emotions, Mm -hmm. we see all that stuff. Yeah. And so it's planned. The, The people that break away from these types of thought processes, addictions, and actually see things for what it is, you can see they're a level up in life. You Mm -hmm. can see them almost instantly when they break away from that stuff and stop following the crowd and start doing their own research and saying, this is what's right for me. I don't give a shit what anybody else says. I'm doing this for me. All of a sudden, you just see them leveling up. Next thing you know, that person is owning a business or they're they're flourishing at work or whatever. Man, and I want to be that person. That's the person I want to be. Yeah. And it takes you, it requires you stepping away from a lot of people in your life to do that. I've gone through several stages of different friend groups. And now we talked about that too, having my tribe, but it's not easy, but it is constantly retraining your mind Mm because those thoughts come through. You had brought up Ozempic Mm -hmm. and me, somebody who I'm very passionate about health and struggled with my weight and I'm a female. And when Ozempic came out, I literally almost took it and I had it. A girlfriend gave it to me and I brought it home and my mind wanted to be like, okay, I want this. It's a quick weight loss thing. Mm. But I had to come back to myself and be like, no, this isn't the right way. This is a quick fix. And I still struggle with that with things, but you just, it takes practice. It's interesting because if it was easy, everybody would do it. Yeah. And the people that are doing the thing that's easy. Yeah. You know what? There is there is no easy path to success. No. There's no easy path to being physically fit. There is just one way to do it, and it's yep. just friggin' doing it. But it's, And it's so rewarding, though, too. Like, I feel so good that I didn't yes. do that. Yeah. So I have friends, and again, I'm not a doctor. This is just me from an uneducated point of view. I have friends that have gone down the journey of the weight loss surgery. And some of them have been successful, and I applaud that. And then others have not. They gain the weight back. And one of the things that I find, it's like money, right? If you have to work really hard to earn your money and sacrifice and really go through the process, that appreciation that you have for money doesn't lend you to spending it stupidly, Mm -hmm. right? You're not, the people that work really hard typically aren't gamblers, aren't drug addicts wasting their money, they're savers, they're whatever. Maybe they're never going to be wealthy, but they're not stupid with their money yeah. because they work so hard for it. Yeah. And I think the health, that health is also something that, that with all these exterior influences that we have, oh, why don't you come to the bar with me? Oh, what are you? no, I got to go to the gym. And it's funny when you're on a diet, people just come out of the woodworks like, hey, I was just thinking about you want this cheesecake? I just needed to make this for me. Yeah. What? Uh, again, just like alcohol, it knocks on your door, it calls you up on the phone, it invites you to a barbecue, it wants you that for every level, there's another devil, mm-hmm. right? So as you're leveling up in life, the devil sees that. And just as God is noticing you or whatever your understanding of God is, yep. the devil's noticing you too and wants to tear you back down and break you away from your connection to source and you really leveling up in life. And if he could use food or if he could use alcohol or if he could use drugs or if he could use sex or porn or whatever your addiction is, your drug of choice, right? It's going to get used against you. But finding your tribe, yep. you're finding your grounding and then stacking wins. I think some of the most people, successful people in the world that I follow and listen to, they always talk about stacking wins, right? One person talks about never hitting snooze on your alarm clock. Mm. And I'm like, what? And he's, look, man, because you made a promise to yourself, you're going to get up. And so the moment you hit snooze, you just lied to yourself. So if you lied about that, something else is going to be even easier to lie. 
throughout the day. And that's how you're starting your day. And that's how you're starting yeah. your day by lying to yourself. Yeah. So set yourself up for a win. What day, what time can you effectively wake up? And I'm not the most punctual of people. My my it takes my, practice, whatever. Yeah. I get it, right? So this isn't me judging. I'm just saying that I set my alarm and I get up just based on that. And then I'm, I'm still working on that one. I yeah. tend to hit snooze sometimes. <laughs> But I also heard on a Mel Robbins podcast that made total sense to me where she said, when you wake up, when your alarm clock goes off and you go back to sleep, you press snooze, even if you only sleep for another 20 minutes, an hour, our bodies are in like a four hour sleep cycle or something along those lines to where that's why you wake up and you're more tired. And that does minutes. happen to me. It's as 90 a, minutes. Yeah, it's okay. a, your circadian sleep cycle as an adult. This is the weird thing because children. They can go through one into, so how a circadian sleep cycle works is you go into what's called drowsiness. Then you go where you doze off. That's called light sleep. Yeah. Then you go into deep sleep. Then you go into REM sleep. Okay. And then you come back into deep sleep. And then you go into light sleep. And then you go into what's called arousal. And then you go through these cycles. That makes so much so sense. So as an adult, you do that within 90 minutes, typically, for the, the average adult. A child does that in 45 minutes, the entire Whoa. sleep cycle. Weird. So your toddler, this is why they have so much energy. Your toddler is getting twice as much sleep as you in the same amount of time. Interesting. Right. Yeah. So, so that's okay. so because they're growing and there's a lot of other things going on. But it's crazy because like parents are like, hey, I'm running on three hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. Your toddler got, and I'm like, dude, oh, I don't know where this energy is coming from. Yeah. Because they literally got six sleep cycles in the time that maybe you got two. Wow. <laughs> so That's they're just so wild. Yeah. And then they're like, so ah. wild. <laughs> and then, of course, feeding them sugar. Like, yeah. here, have some crispy puffs. Here, have some uh, have a donut. This is good. They said this is healthy cereal. Yeah. They, you know, look, man, it, again, if it flies, if it, if it swims, if it slithers, if it whatever grazes, it, I'm going to eat it. I don't need anything engineered. I'm not going to yeah. eat anything engineered anymore. Nothing that comes out of a box. Uh, now they eat whole foods and that uh, that's it. Yeah. And so I feel my energy levels catching up with my three year olds. Mm -hmm. The crowd, I'm going back to the crowd of now. Sorry, I'm bringing it all full circle. I noticed that I mix, I have three scoops in the morning. I, I have my process. I heat up some bone broth now. Oh, I love gives, bone broth. That gives me the mm -hmm. salt that you, because there's another thing, salt that we're not getting enough mm -hmm. of. And I have my bone broth, and then I heat up for 60 seconds uh, to boil some water. I throw my kratom in a cup, mix it all up, throw some cold water down that. And by then, my coffee's made from my curry, and away I go. That's my morning. Okay. That's my routine. And then I get on, and I have some apps that I post post daily things to, to because I have followers, so I'm going to stay in touch with them yeah. and, and nurture those relationships, and then plan my day, and then go at it. Yeah. But the kratom... What it does, because what Chris Bell had said in his movie, A Leaf of Faith, is there really an opiate epidemic or maybe here in the United States, maybe there's a pain. And maybe let's just talk about this for a second, because you were saying you were taking it for pleasure. And I did, too. Mm -hmm. I had that magic. It gave me energy. People would be like down and out where I'm cleaning and yeah. yeah. Going, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and then if you mix a beer or two with that, ooh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. happy times, right? Yeah. And so the thing is, it, it, we're medicating one thing or another. I was I went into it with because it was pain but then i i realized am i gonna have as good of a day if i don't take it and then pretty soon yeah it became it mm -hmm. was definitely habit for me and, yeah and this, that was a definite struggle for me and then when i found out about kratom i was like or kratom I keep mystery yeah <laughs> but i found that man this is it because it just breaks that chain because if you're in pain management it's the weirdest. It, they make you feel like you're a drug addict. And maybe I was. Let's be honest. Yeah. Maybe I was, but I didn't want to be called out yeah. on it. Yeah. Right? And so so who are you to tell me I'm in pain? And that's the question. They, they have you fill out this thing where, you know, um, how much pain are you in? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a scale of one to ten. Believe it or not, like my joints were blowing up and I could close my hands. I couldn't get out of bed. I was in a lot of pain. Yeah. But then I also wanted to feel good. But anyhow, so every month when you run out of your script, hey, how come you're not, are you getting better or whatever? No, I'm not. And then are you sure you're really in pain? Like you, you didn't have as much in your system this month. Mm -hmm. Are you taking more than you need to? And they just always friggin' mm -hmm. get you. And you have to drug test before you go. And there's and then if you have alcohol in your system, man, they just thought you're demonstrating signs. It's, dude, 
you're going to milk my insurance company for yeah. what it is. Just give me my script and let me go. But yeah. they really put you through a process. And the moment I found Kratom, it was it. I was like, never again. Yeah. And it's been And you can years. buy Kratom at any gas station, any, what, like, smoke shop. Actually, I would actually... I'm a big believer in sourcing. Just oh, like absolutely. We're, like but we're I'm saying you can pretty much get it. Yeah, but it's I not would, an over the counter. Right. I would educate uh, our listeners, number one, if they're considering trying it, I would ask them to find out where the sourcing is because mm-hmm. not all kratoms are created equal because people put other adulterants in it. Yeah. So you want to go to a reputable place here in Bremerton. I was going to say, where do you get yours? The green room over the there. Green room. Roz, okay. Roz over there that owns the green room. She's an awesome lady. She's a mom of six. Crazy. She loves the business. She's a superwoman like you, right? And yeah. Does Always the... support small businesses yeah. if you can. But yeah. they double blind test their stuff. And me working where I work, I can't ever, I get randomly drug tested. Mm-hmm. And so I can't have any type of adulterant in my system. And I get mm-hmm. randomly drug tested all the time. And I've been taking Kratom for four years, and I have never popped for anything because of that double blind yeah. testing. And when she and she tells you, she educates you like, "Hey, this strand gives you this type of energy. This strand helps you with pain. This strand." And, and I've only ever tried one strain. Like I take the the brand is Crave, I think. That's and their it's, brand, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's the only one I'll take, and it's it the Mangda. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Mangda. But that's the only one because when I find something that works for me, I like to continue to take it. But I'm open to try other ones. I'll bring you some of mine. I okay. try I take White Valley in the morning because it gives Oh, me, I haven't tried that one. Oh, man, it's good. And then I scoop it. I don't buy it in pill form. Yeah. I just scoop it because Roz, again, she's like ethically, she feels bad for people that take it in pill form because, they're because the, again, the sourcing, mm-hmm. it's a, you, she sells it in the powder form. It's really freshly ground. You're getting it as, as fresh and clean as you can get it. And so it doesn't th- taste very good. However, what does that's good for you, right? <laughs> yeah. it's kava. Some people are like, oh, it tastes like dirt, but the feeling you get from it and it's healthy for you. Yeah. And so that's the, it's funny. I, I just wish Brussels sprouts tasted like ribeye. That'd be great. So like, I love Brussels sprouts. <laughs> I love them. I them could a, eat a whole bowl of Brussels crazy. sprouts just for dinner. Oh, yum. No, the carnivore of me is coming out. So I just be like, ah, I just throw some bacon on it and I'll just eat yeah. the bacon. Right. But, no, I but, love veggies. But the thing is with, with the Kratom and Kratom, I drink it. I just pound it down. I... I grew up in the the 70s and 80s yeah. and 90s, so I could drink anything. It's right? not like alcohol tastes good, but we drink that, yeah, right? Right, because mm, you try to get... vodka, I yeah. want so much Ooh, of it. Is, is, this a, <laughs> is this a Polish vodka? Or yeah. Is, this, is it going to get me fucked up? Yeah. That's what I want to know. Yeah, and same mentality. Like, we drink alcohol to feel good and to have fun and whatnot. Where Kratom, we should be drinking it in kava because it's good for us. It makes us feel good, right? I think it lightens up your spirit and yeah. it opens you up to being more connected with people. And isn't that really what the human genome is? One thing that COVID taught us was when we were all locked down and we couldn't talk to each other, mm-hmm. you watched our suicide rates go up, you watched all kinds of stuff. You can see this in prisons right now, the, the, the stats are unquestionable. People that are locked up in solitary confinement, people that are, have no contact with other human beings, they go, they just slowly die. Yeah. We have to be connected. We were meant to be connected. This is also one of the things that if you look at other countries that have defeated their war on drugs by legalization, but they legalized it and they actually hired some really smart people. If you go to Portugal or Azores, they had a real big problem in the early 2000s where about 7% of their population was addicted to a major narcotic. Mm. For, for a small country like that, that's a huge number. Yeah. And so they gathered up a lot of social scientists and stuff and they said, okay, look, we're going to, we're going to legalize it, but we're going to have a threefold process. Number one, the tax money, we're going to tax it. And then the money is going to be to like go into rehab. It's going to help people reconnect with their families, therapy, this and that. The second portion of that money is actually going to all the people that were in jail for drug offenses, they couldn't get jobs. And so a lot of them would go back into the, because that's the only, only thing they could do. So they said, look, any company that would hire a drug addict will give you 50% of their salary and 50% of their benefits for the first three years. Mm. And if they relapse, we'll pay for the relapse and then just give them a second chance. You watch the number of their addictive population drop from 7% to something like 0.00003. Oh, and then the third portion was they had to reconnect with their family. So part of that, 
the addict, the way we treat addiction here in the United States and a lot of other countries is we attack the addict, we ostracize them, we tell them that they're worthless and nobody wants anything to do with them. So of course they internalize that, they go to the drug because then they feel mm -hmm. comforted. But what the addict is seeking, just like all other human beings, is connection. That is what we know now. Will we change our mainstream thought on addiction? Probably not because yeah. there's too much money to be made, right? Big Pharma has it on lock. They sold us the stuff that got us addicted and now they're selling us the drugs to get us off of our addiction. Mm -hmm. How sick is that? Yeah. It's the same thing as alcohol. They sold us the alcohol. They told us alcohol is how adults deal with problems. Oh, you're an alcoholic. Okay. You're a terrible person and whatever. And then here, take this pill. Mm -hmm. Instead yeah. of weird. This is not drink. We're it's just so sad to me that we are all such beautiful souls and we don't feel good enough or confident enough. So we numb. We have to take. Yeah. It's sad. And the numbing, that's it. Like we, you know, what are we numbing from? What are we? So I believe, and this is just my personal belief again, and I was discussing this with my wife, Joni. Shout out to Joni of Respirit. Yeah, Joni. So, love Joni. <laughs> yeah, so, so I was saying, hey, I believe that anxiety is actually when our mind, our body, and our spirit starts to scream at it. So I would wait because I was an alcoholic and I was drinking so much, I would pass out. And then at 2 o'clock in the morning, my anxiety would wake me up and say, hey, let's think about all the things that we did wrong since I was like two, 10 years old that you can't do anything about. And I, that's anxiety, but that's also your mind, body, and spirit because you would have things that you... Your purpose is not being fulfilled. I don't have any anxiety anymore. Why? Mm -hmm. Because I'm walking into my purpose. I have avocado going on. I have, I, I have fulfillment in my job. I am helping people every day. I have a tribe of mm -hmm. people, a family that support me. I am eating properly. I am feeling good. I'm chasing my health. I'm doing everything that yeah. I want to do. I'm podcasting with yeah. you. Which is another thing, another dream of mine, right? To be on a yeah. podcast with like-minded people. And so because I'm stepping into my purpose, why would I have an anxiety? Anxiety mm -hmm. only comes when you're not. Yeah. Les Brown once said, he said, where the richest place in the world is. Where, do you know the answer? No. Oh, okay. So, so where, if you had to take a guess, where's the richest place in the world? Inside yourself. That's, that's <laughs> fair, but you're what, a, a woken person. Yeah. But, but let's say if you were just, average answer where would you say oh god i have no idea <laughs> so a lot of people would answer dubai right? okay. a lot of money some okay. people would answer china but his answer is the graveyard mm. because there you're going to find books that were never written you're going to find dreams never fulfilled you're going to find movies that were never made promises that were never kept and he said imagine you go your whole life right now and you're on your deathbed and you're surrounded by all the ghosts of your dreams and they come to you and they were like, we came to you to bring us life. And now we're going to die with you. Yeah. How, how traumatizing is that thought? So if that isn't enough to wake somebody up to say, hey, man, it's time to step up. Yeah. It's time to step into your purpose. It's time to go, right? And, and there, don't let the grass grow on your feet. Don't, pro like, I can procrastinate with the best of them. Yeah. Okay, there isn't yeah. an excuse I haven't thought of, made up, tried, said, whatever. It's all just an excuse for me to just procrastinate, not step into my purpose, right? Or yeah. not hold on to the responsibilities. And there is a responsibility of your dreams coming to you and you have a responsibility to your dreams to fulfill them. Yeah. That's where the anxiety goes away because you're fulfilling. Like at least if your anxiety comes to you in the middle of the night, you say, hey, I'm in process. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Like, yeah. Leave me alone. I'm working on it. Yeah. Instead of, oh, and then you numb yourself back so you don't have it. And then it comes back to you even stronger and it comes yeah. back to you even stronger and it gets louder and louder until you can't take it. And then we go to the doctor, say, Hey, I got this bad anxiety thing. Can you give me a pill? So then it numbs it down even more. And then mm -hmm. we, we watch our suicide rates jump. We watch all of these things because these pills are making us crazy. Don't ever just cold Turkey off a of medication because that's mm -hmm. a death sentence or can be like, my God. Yeah. But if we just, stood up and said, you know what? I'm taking a stand. My dream is to be a doctor. And I don't care if I'm 50. My dream is to be a this. I don't care if whatever. I don't care when my, I'm going to step towards it. And it's not going to be easy. It's going to be challenging. I went through it. Mm -hmm. I literally just took a major leap of faith and I had all the 
naysayers and what if it fails? You don't know what you're doing. You didn't go to school for this. (laughs) What? You're getting a divorce. I went for all of it at once, but it is so, I would do it all over again. As hard as it was, like I would do it all over again. You know what? And Steppy, I got to, I have a lot of friends that say that they, what if it doesn't work? What if it does? Yeah. I you know, what if it yeah. does? You know me, man. I'm just looking out for you. Whatever. You're taking on too much. I'll tell you what. David Goggins, love Goggins. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He always talks about everybody wants to put their limitations on you. Yep. That's them. They can't do it. But why does that define you? Yeah. Why are you letting their thoughts and their opinions define who you are? You're never going to know if you can run an ultra marathon until you put on those freaking shoes and you start running. He actually yeah. ran 120 uh, or 100 mile marathon. Or 100 Did you read his book? You... With broken feet. He yeah. started the race with broken feet. Okay. So, so I don't care what anybody says. It can be done. It's just, do we choose to do it? I'll tell you what. I can choose to go home right now, knock down a bottle of vodka, mm-hmm. pass out till I, you Choices. know, whatever. Wake up hungover, struggling to work, be a half ass employee, then whatever. Or I can go home, be energized. I can cook dinner for my family, you know, help my wife with things, be present with my kids. And then after a podcast, after a full day, after working out today, after all of those things, I did all those things. So I stacked my wins. So why would I want to ruin it? And why am I going to let somebody else that doesn't stack any wins for themselves? Why would I let them define me? And that's another thing too. People will say to me that I'm one of the most optimistic people. I always find the good in things and I choose to. I choose to because I've lived the other end. I've gone the negative route and I've seen how that worked out for me. Mm -hmm. And I encourage everyone out there, anything and everything, just choose to be positive and optimistic about it. And your outcome is going to be a lot better. Yep. And I got to tell you, like, Joni and I, we were on our ass. Okay. We were, there was no overtime coming in. Her, she had left her old business where, you know, where we were comfortable. Okay. Mm. We were, and that's the thing, comfortable. Comfortability is a killer. Yeah. Because it was easy for me to just go home and drink because yep. what, what was motivated. So this uncomfortability comes in our life. Oh my God, the credit card debt's racking up. We're not, we're making less than what was going out. This isn't sustainable. How are mm-hmm. we going to do this? So Joni started really pushing to get Respirit open. And then I, we had always said, wouldn't it be nice to have some type of bar or whatever? And then we started drinking kava and I wasn't sober at the time, but kava was definitely in the thing. And then, you know, on the couch, oh, you know what we should do is we should have a kava bar. Mm -hmm. But it it took getting really uncomfortable to say, you know what? This is it. This is our chance. Let's do it. And we had to, then at meeting you. Yeah. I was like, oh yes, we're going. Let's go. (laughs) And then you were like the one thing, and this is, this was the trigger for me, right? Cause I loved it. You were like, I need a deadline. And you were talking about yourself. The only way I work is if I got a deadline. So let's say December 5th. Yeah. And it was history after. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now- I remember I did a post saying coming soon. And I sent it to you guys like, hey, by the way, I let everybody know cop is coming <laughs> soon. So I better real, follow but, through with this. It lit a fire. And then yeah. shout out to the scrapyard. So months prior, so starting around June last year, I think that was the first month that I had, I had catered the scrapyard and, and done what we did. And the explosion for the scrapyard, the, you saw the, a yeah. lot of the fighters coming yeah. out to support us and show yep. us love on this last one, the last event for Cavacado. And, but again, it was in a sober moment when Steve needed somebody and he was like, look, the vendor dropped out on me last minute. I need someone. And I didn't know how I was going to do it. I just knew it. that was my you showed up, And I showed up, right? Yeah. So yes, it, 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 it can happen. It can happen to anybody. Life is going to present you opportunities and then. Either you're going to numb yourself away from it and then your anxiety is going to grow or you can step into it and you can say, look, man, this is my shot because yeah. I might not get another one. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so here I am at 47 years old with a business that's growing. Living your life, taking chances. Right. And yeah. And look at how it's turning out. It just it. keeps getting better and better. People keep hitting us on social media. Hey, when are you guys going to be opening? We're waiting on a couple of Oh, I already have guys. people asking me. <laughs> you only serve kava once a month because... Right now we do Cavacado the first Friday of every month, but people are like, oh wait, are you not serving it during business hours? Eventually, but yeah, right we're now. Working. City of yeah. Bremerton, we work to on their clock. They don't work on yeah. ours. So just so you guys They're know, a lot of fun. Yeah, <laughs> it's in process. Yeah. But, but we always do a charitable event. Mm-hmm. That's what we do. So like donations, 
are how we make sure that we can be legit with what we do. And so we picked a family this last go around, we raised money for them in this last event. So one of our purposes, and here's the thing. I Giving I, back. Yes. Mm -hmm. So a friend of mine that was like, I don't understand why Cavacado is exploding so fast. And like, you guys are only open like one, one day a month right now. And then whatever. And I've got a business in the near vicinity and I just can't. And I was like, what are you giving back to the community? Yeah. You know what I mean? What are you giving back? And I put myself right out there with the homeless people and everything. I give food away. I yep, help people. Me too. I, you know what I mean? And because I know that it always comes back to me. Joe Vitale, I don't know if you've read The Abundance Paradigm. Oh, yeah. I love Joe. So oh, good. Yeah. One of the things he talks about is the number one thing when it comes to money is giving it away. Yes. Yeah. Being a blessing to others. And, yeah. And one of the people I follow talks about he was like, look, if you want to live that millionaire lifestyle, all you got to do is make a quarter million dollars a year. Yeah. Because the way the tax laws and everything, you could drive the baller car, live in a nice house, quarter million, and go on nice vacations, you're good to go. But if you want to make millions, that means your why has to elevate, mm -hmm. right? So your why has to be pretty powerful. So you got to be a blessing to others. Yeah. You got to be a life changer. So you owning this business and the people working for you, you being the best boss that they ever had. You're changing their lives. You're changing their family's futures. You're like, you could be that boss that pays for their kid's college and pays back their student yeah. loans and does all this stuff because you're making so much money that you can give it back. Holding on to the money, just like all blessings are meant to flow through yeah. us, but not to be, you know, yeah. like held on to. Yeah. Right? And that's the mistake that humans, I think, make in a lot of things is we just hold on. Oh, that's all mine. You no, work man. your ass off your whole life and you have this huge savings account and then you end up dying. Like, yeah. I <laughs> love to travel. I love to give back and live my life. Shout out things. to Alanis Morissette, yeah. the black five, the white shirt, <laughs> right? Or that, yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yes. So giving back, being a blessing to others, showing your appreciation and gratitude every day. Having daily practices mm -hmm. that are that gratitude. What we were talking about, Ikagi, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So Ikagi, like the happiness in a full life, right? When people when we were talking about it earlier, when people were like, Hey man, you want to go to the bar? No, man, I gotta take my boy swimming. Yeah. Today. So I have a commitment already there yeah. as a shelter for me to not go drinking. I love that we've read a lot of the same books. I'm yeah, curious as too. what other ones. You probably yeah. we're just have to so see many. Yeah, yeah, another podcast. Yeah, well, like, definitely. All right, you, okay, we'll, we'll give you. Yeah, an <laughs> I'm a podcast and audible junkie. Like Me I too. just I'm a knowledge seeker and. My entire life, back when I was in school and whatnot, I you couldn't get me to pick up a book because yeah. I didn't have anything I was passionate about. But <laughs> five years ago, when I started my spiritual journey, now it's just I want to know as much as I can and better my life and pass that information along to other people because of how much my life has gotten better because of it. Isn't yeah. it weird that I'm also a knowledge junkie. I love learning. Mm -hmm. I love the process, especially audio visual. So yep. I am also a podcast and a knowledge junkie, but I don't think I would have ever made it to becoming a doctor. Because somebody telling me what I need to learn versus what oh, I yeah. want to learn. Yeah. I want to yeah. learn this thing. I don't want to learn all these little things again. Yeah. I just want to learn about this one thing. Yeah. And, I, and I know that they have to dumb education down to lowest level to level you up or whatever. I get that. But if I'm already at that level to understand something, I, I just want to learn the thing I want to yeah. learn about. Yeah. And I know people on the listeners like, oh, we have to do that. Cool. If that's your journey, fine. But for me, listening to somebody like Neil deGrasse Tyson explain the universe and that, see, there that's the breakthrough where he can, because he can go into the rabbit hole of astrophysics, right? He can take you into quantum theory. He could, in and out. I, I don't even know who you're talking about right Neil now. Neil deGrasse Tyson, literally one of the smartest people on the planet. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, what? Yeah. Okay, now oh, yeah. I'm going to go down that rabbit oh, hole. Oh, man. Brilliant, <laughs> okay. man. But he explains the universe and things of that nature in such a way that I understand it. That the normal average Joe could just easily pick up and all of a sudden now you have a broad understanding mm. of a bigger universe that we're all a part of. Yeah. And he is definitely, he's definitely a guy that could cross swords with the most brilliant of our scientists, scientific minds and physicist minds of our era and just still outshine him. Anytime there's a hundred people in the room, he's probably the smartest one in it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So Neil deGrasse Tyson also talks about like the whole thing about aliens and without going too far into that rabbit hole, but he says, and other people agree, 
never has there been a better time than now if to to discuss the whole alien thing. Like we're watching Congress declassify information. Mm -hmm. Aliens are real people. (laughs) (laughs) So and how do we know this, right? So if we're going to use a scientific method to break something down, we have a hypothesis that we test it. Now, say you see something. A hundred years ago, I'd have to take you at your word. Okay, Tasha's never lied to me before. Yeah. She saw something. I don't know what it is. Yeah. But now, say now you see something, but I'm on the other side of town and I get a snapshot of it with my cell phone, right? And then on the other side of town, somebody's got a radar and they saw something on their radar. Now we have triple, quadruple forms of verification. Yep, there was something there. So now we don't just have to take you at your word because we're all about verifying information. And that's the thing. There's no such thing as good information. This is my belief anyways. There's no such thing as good information or bad information. Yeah. There's just information and is it credible? But be careful too with AI. Have you heard about all that? Oh, yeah, yeah. So again, is it credible? Yeah. So the, when we say is it credible, is it verified? Yeah. So right now, as of 2023, if you have a vi- video and I think audio mm-hmm. no longer be admissible in a court of law without two-step or three-step verification. Mm -hmm. This is where we're at in technology now. And so, yes, it can be good to, to hey, I saw this thing. It can also be bad if, oh, you did this thing and now you got to go to jail. So we need to be very careful on that. But again, information is just information. How I perceive it, that's where the good and bad come in, Mm -hmm. right? How I internalize it versus how you can receive the same information and you take it an entirely different way. And maybe that's part of your spiritual journey. Yeah. Your guides are telling you this isn't for you. Yeah. Whatever the case may be, maybe it's the right thing for me, not the right thing for you, but we're all on our own paths. And think about how many people just take some, I see it happen all the time where I'll call people out. Somebody will tell me something and I'm like, where did you hear that? And they're like, it, it's true. And I'm like, where did you hear that? So and so. And I'll look it up. I'm like, what are you, you're passing this along. And people just believe what they're told. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm a research junkie and I am a knowledge seeker because so much of that happens all the time. So to, to leave, I think probably a good time to, to close off the podcast, but Mm -hmm. I would say that to leave everybody with a good thought here, that if you're on a spiritual journey and if your body is a temple, I think going down the rabbit hole, even if you're a vegan or a staunch believer in this or that. I would still explore other dietary things. If you're a huge believer in big pharma and, and they're working for you, I'm not here to poop on your way of life. or what I am. You, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am saying that there are other things that are natural out yeah. there. And that I think that natural should be the first course of action. Absolutely. And that, that if, again, if there's something like, let's take COVID, for example, we never... The human genome had not seen something like COVID. People were dying left and right. My wife and family, I've lost family members, mm-hmm. whatever. Joni was in the hospital for two weeks. She got COVID pretty bad and other people have suffered. So I don't take any of that lightly. COVID was not, I don't, I do believe it was an engineered thing. I don't know. I, yeah, I, 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 that shit wasn't getting anywhere near me. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. So like, I, I know that. The United States government, and this is documented stuff, so you can verify this all you want. We have experimented with chemical and biological weapons, and you can't tell me that other countries may not be doing the same Mm -hmm. thing right now. And so if one of those happened to get loose for whatever reason, and it goes rampant into the world, like we saw, we watched the world shut down because of it. Yeah, just the thought of injecting anything into our bodies, I feel they're always coming up with something different, whether it's the vaccine or now Ozempic, like you don't know what's in that. I'm sorry, but. And a lot of the people that take They're trying Ozempic, to kill us all. You're not putting that vaccine in me. Oh, that's going to make me skinny? Hell yeah. I'm yeah, right? It. I know. Oh, it makes make me it. skinny. Let's yeah, do yeah, it. Can coke, I get coke, multiple? Yeah. <laughs> coke will make me skinny, right? Yeah. Or, but not in a good way. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, but again, I do your research. Yeah. Right? And then, and I encourage you to follow people like Dr. Leswig who's a professor at, I believe, Stanford and UC Berkeley, lectures doctors in medicine. So if, if you're lecturing at some of the Ivy League and high-level schools, you might know a thing or two, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and he's the one that has really launched a lot of this journey, saying that we've been lied to about the food py- pyramid. And one of Dr. Lustwig's major quotes is, look, man, uh, Watergate wasn't the worst controversy that the United States government has ever you know, been guilty of. Matter of fact, 
it's food gate and it's mm-hmm. about the pyramid. Just follow Dr. Luswick and man, he will blow your mind. And he comes at you with his knowledge, his base, his research that is tried and true, that is double blind studied. Anything that anyone wants to throw at you in terms of an argument, oh, how do you verify this? You're now arguing with professors that mm-hmm. have, that through their code of ethics, have to yeah. verify their stuff. This isn't just BS stuff. And oh, by the way, you want to know the best place to hide something? Where? On the second page of Google, because nobody ever goes there. Oh, my God. (laughs) That's good. I'm like, where? (laughs) So anyway, thank you for having me on, Tasha. I really appreciate this. And I do think we should turn this into a weekly or biweekly, because you have so much knowledge and information. Even just today, I feel like I learned so much from you. I feel like I could sit here and just listen to you talk for hours and oh, hours. Thank you. So I will talk for hours. Just ask yeah, my no, family. I'm the same my way, but it's right? kind of just sitting here listening because I am a knowledge junkie. I want to learn yeah. and I'm constantly listening, reading. So what would you say before we close out? Like who or what are three people or books or podcasts that you really go to for your information? Wow. Okay. So information books, Man, I'm still re- reveling on outwitting the devil, but the book that I'm really trying to process through is Food of the Gods. Mm, and I was supposed to loan that to you. Yeah. I, I have it. Okay. So I have it to give to you. Okay. Um, it's by McKinnon is the author's name. Amazing book, but man, it's such a read. Like I can only take in about five or six pages. Okay. Because it talks about the distancing and big alcohol, the dominator lifestyle, the death of the divine feminine, mm. how we have distanced ourselves from our relationship with plant medicine yeah, and our connection to Mother Earth and the divine feminine. And from a spiritual standpoint, how women have always been subjugated or, or con- considered second-rate citizens at best. Hell, we're talking about here in the night in the 1930s or 40s as the first time yeah. women can vote in this country. Yeah, we got a problem here. Yeah, and that way of thought is still deep. And if you're ever going to talk about any marginalized community, because we sure do have our problems with that, I would say that if whatever marginalized community that you're in, I would say that women are typically in that community, even more marginalized in that community, which yeah. sucks, right? And then. If you really want to go down the rabbit hole, people that are gay or lesbian or trans, they're even more marginalized in whatever community. Mm-hmm. And so, like, it's time that we lift each other up. So I would definitely say food of the gods. I would say outwitting the devil. And then, of course, one of the people that I've really been exploring and following is Dr. Uh, Ken Berry, connected to Dr. Chafee, because I have been exploring on the the carnivore lifestyle, the ketogenic lifestyle, and also the ketovore lifestyle. I thought I was the only one that had that word because one of my gamer tags is the Kratomic Ketovore. Yeah. It's Dr. Kenberry's wife. I think her name's Nisha. She talks about that. So she's primarily ketogenic, but she believes that the proper human diet is, okay, so you eat your meat, your food, and you do your intermittent fasting, but say you're hunting and then you run into some blueberries or something, you're going to eat those. And then you're going to get 10, 12 grams of carbs in your system yeah. or whatever. And then you go run and you hunt down the elk or whatever you're hunting that day. And then you go back to eating that. And then maybe you run across something else. So it's not eating, living off of sugary things or fruits or whatever. Your primary source of nutrition is still from meat and fats or Mm -hmm. for those that don't want to eat meat, like vegetables and fats. But you got to have the fats. Yeah. And to leave everybody with this thought is, and this is from Harvard Medical School, there is no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. There are essential amino acids, which is protein, and essential fatty acids, which are mm-hmm. fats. No such thing as an a, and you guys can Google me all you want in here. I'll see the comment box blow up, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, these are facts. So if we go back 300,000 years, there was no like corn chips. There was no whatever. You foraged and you hunted or you fished or you died. Those were yeah. the three. I also think to be very mindful of like where you're getting your meat from. Right, of course. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Because I remember years ago when I stopped eating meat, and I eat it again now, but when I stopped eating it, I don't know if it was a, something I listened to or a documentary, but learning about how everything's energy, how was that animal killed? Yeah. And you take an animal that was tortured, and now you're consuming that burger or whatever, and you're giving it to a child and now they're all spazzing out and whatnot because they're picking up on the vibrations of how that animal was killed so that i'm gonna have to interview you on that and choni i would love to see you and joni do a podcast about energy because as we're going down the energy rabbit Mm -hmm. hole we have a young one 
it is very interesting to see like my energy transferring into him about my belief system. And he is definitely my carnivore. Like he yeah. eats whatever I eat. So Oh, and he's drinking kava. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How old is he? <laughs> Three. <laughs> Three. He's like craving it. Can I have another one, please? Yeah, and I'm like, oh my God, you like the taste right of that? Now. Yeah. yeah. He's crazy. <laughs> but I do notice that when he eats his eggs, he lo- he put himself on a ketogenic diet. He'll have his coffee with grandma and he'll have some bites of this. But he wants to be like dad. Yeah, when it's dinner time, though, it's I want steak and I want eggs and I want cheese. And that's yeah. what he wants to eat. And he's happy with that. Yeah. And his energy level's good and he's healthy and he's happy. And that's all that matters yeah. as a parent and seeing him grow. And he's growing like a weed, man. Yeah. And so anyways, I, I think I've taken so. So food of the gods, outwitting the devil, and then Dr. Chafee slash Dr. Ken Berry, proper human diet. Okay. I, I think you guys, Okay. all of you guys will. I'm always it. looking for a really good new book and also asking people who I look up to and are, are on the same path too. You yeah, know? absolutely. So, Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And yeah, let's get into the weekly or bi-weekly because I'm sure there's weekly. weekly. Perfect. Let's, let's do, do it. Yeah, okay. let's do it. Yeah. And then next subject matter, maybe in the comments, let us know. Or we could do got. a post or like a poll. Heck yeah. Let's okay. poll and see what our next topic should okay, be. Okay. Give me some suggestions and then right. I'll like list them. Right. Because I, I would love to bring Joni on Absolutely. and hear you guys talk about energy and like, yeah. Because Joni doing what she does with Respirit and the trapped emotions. And oh emotions man, she so, she does you know, so many amazing things. I think we need to bring and then probably Alex too. We oh, need to yeah. get Alex on here. I just did one with her last night, actually. And that's what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bring on more people that offer services here or they sell product here. Right. Just get all the information out there. Maxwell's another one. I'm really interested in what he does. Great. Another one I think we need to like Definitely talk about how they're healing people, their clients, yeah. what they do. Everything here in the mystic movement is about connection and transformation, about leveling yes. up, raise your vibration, heal your trauma. <laughs> yeah. Just, and just let's level up here, guys. Let's level up together. Let's level though. up. Level up. I think we should, I wish we could make a song on it. Right. Level oh, up. we talked about the hip hop jingle. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. man. We've got lots of good stuff coming. Thank you very much for having me on, Tosh. Always. I really appreciate it. Thank yes. you. Yes. And we will see you all soon. Awesome.